So our next speaker, aside from being a former member of Congress who I served with, a governor here in this country of the state of New Mexico, cabinet secretary, was also ambassador to the United Nations. So to speak on that, I give you none other than the Honorable Bill Richardson. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please remain standing. <laughs> No, no. I want to, you know, I was sitting here and uh, about a year ago, uh, I remember being on a panel, same issue with uh, General Mukasey and I and several others. And I was thinking how far we've come in the last year and how gracious many of you are to give almost everybody a standing ovation uh, that comes up here to speak. And, and, and what I'm thinking is that if there's any way you can give yourself one, because I have to tell you this morning, I was, I probably come the longest, farthest away than anybody here. And so I'm, I was still on New Mexico time. And I thought of the event a year ago, and many of you were there, and Mukasey and I were, were there, and, and I'm not, and a lot of these distinguished panelists Obviously, in the last year, if you look at who they are, military people, Republicans, Democrats, cabinet secretaries, this is not a partisan issue. And so uh, I, I come to you today uh, with, with, I guess, with this smile, because I try to be an optimist. And I look at uh, what has happened in the last year, and I see the premise of many at the time when the Obama administration took office. You know, I was very attracted to the fact that the president said, uh, we negotiate with our enemies. We negotiate with North Korea, uh, of course not Al-Qaeda and many others, but, you know, with Iran, maybe it makes sense to, to open a dialogue. I mean, that was the early posture. And look what has happened in the last three years. Uh, a dialogue was initiated by the United States, but slapped down by the government of Iran. Consistently going to negotiations on nuclear enrichment and not being serious, uh, kidnapping Americans and many others, uh, making provocative statements about the Jewish Holocaust and uh, not being part of the international community. And so what happened was sanctions were brought on, the most powerful sanctions in many years because Europe and other nations joined us. They were banking sanctions, uh, military sanctions, uh, some energy sanctions. And the European Union said we still should talk about uranium enrichment. And talks are going on, but every time the Iranian government either stalls or is not serious or is buying time. And I suspect what they're going to do now with this potential MEK delisting is they're going to say, oh, we're, we're now ready to negotiate. I, I can just tell fairly soon, some statement coming out. But I don't think it justifies a recognition that Iran is serious. They're not. They're not serious. Look what they're doing in the Middle East. Look what they're doing propping up Syria, the most repressive government on earth today, killing people. Look what they do with Hamas and Hezbollah. Look what they do with the trafficking of weapons and uh, uranium. Look what they do in disrupting what's happening all around the world in Afghanistan and uh, the state leading sponsor of terrorism. So that justification that some threw out, oh, you know, we're in negotiations with Iran, should 
automatically, I believe, be discarded. But I like to focus on the positive. Why delist the MEK? I think there are a lot of reasons, a lot of reasons that were given uh, here by our military leaders, by the Attorney General, uh, by uh, constitutional scholars, uh, by, by many others that have expertise a lot more than I do on Camp Ashraf and Camp Liberty and, and what's happened in Iran and the actions of the Maliki government. Uh, but, but I like to list these decisions because I've been in those decision-making capacities where you weigh the options and, and, and the answer is what is in the national security of the United States. I want you all to know, I don't know if you agree with this, but I think these sanctions on Iran are working. They're not perfect, but they're squeezing them. You can tell by the way they are treating their oil, sort of stockpiling it. By the way, they're a little more serious in their statements about negotiating. They're not doing it, but it is obvious that these sanctions, because they're more widespread, they involve more countries, that somehow they are working and they should be given this chance to work. Iran represses its own people. That is another reason. America should always stand on behalf of those that support democracy. Iran, right now, their behavior in terms of dealing with their own people and their conduct in international foreign policy is something that does not warrant any kind of strong, strong working together with. 2008, the United Kingdom, America's closest ally, removed the MEK from the list of prescribed organizations and lifted all of the consequent restrictions. In 2009, the Council of Ministers of the European Union voted unanimously to remove the MEK from the European Union's list of terrorist organizations. In July 2010, the U.S. Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia Circuit held that the Department of State's designation of the MEK was faulty because it violated the due process rights of that group. And this designation of the MEK has been used by Iranian surrogates in Iraq, as well as the Maliki government in Iraq, to attack MEK members in Camp Ashraf, or impose inhumane restrictions on them, which has led to the loss of life. But have you ever heard of a decision in Washington made without politics? And the politics here, and I don't know if it is politics, I heard the Secretary of State say that one of the factors in the decision was uh, the, the conduct, the behavior of the MEK members as they were transferred. The behavior has been exemplary. There's been cooperation. There's been all kinds of uh, assistance uh, and others have given. I think we have to have a continued effort. But I want to just say here, and, and, and I too want to join in the praise that was given to uh, Patrick Kennedy. I, I love to be introduced with a guy with such hair and great teeth, that, you know, the, the Kennedy legacy here in the United States Senate. But you know, we were introduced by uh, a senator, a conservative senator from Missouri on the Intelligence Committee, a uh, hundred members of Congress have signed a resolution, a hundred members of the House. That's a lot. I mean, we've come a long way in one year. And it's Republicans and Democrats, it's about 50-50. I don't know, maybe, maybe I'm wrong here. But uh, again, I just want to say to you, the time to delist is now. If there's one thing that we need to do is keep that strong, positive pressure on based on facts. And if a little politics plays in the way, so be it. Thank you.